once again, I'm Stephen Plata. I'm the club manager for Tesla Owners Club New York State. And we are in part two of our Tesla winter prep course. This is our final part, part two, final part over here. So just as a recap too, and some of what we discussed in part one, and it's gonna flow into a little bit of this, but commonly asked questions, defrosting and preconditioning, winter driving tips, and big one is tires. All right, so I was driving in wet weather conditions. Why does my car say autopilot unavailable? So autopilot requires visibility, mainly focuses on cameras, but there's also ultrasonic sensors. Some of the older vehicles, not much older, but just two, three years old roughly, uh, have radar built into them and they used radar. But the, the big thing that makes autopilot what it is are cameras. So if your cameras or your sensors are, uh, if they have salt or grime or mud, make sure you get them clean. Um, realistically, all you need to do is, you could do the, the easiest method, put a little spit on your thumb and just clean them off like that. But if you wanna keep a microfiber towel in your car, a little bit of a spray, that's another really great option. So if, if you're getting something that says um, autopilot unavailable, that the cameras are blocked, that could be one of the reasons why. Um, also, you might see poor weather detected. If it's starting to snow pretty heavily, if there's a really heavy rain, um, it's going to give you that little warning on the screen. So inclement weather also decreases visibility, just like it does for us, does the same for cameras. All right, so. Uh, the last part is that may also all uh, it may affect the autopilot features or just navigate on autopilot. So it really just depends on what's being affected at that time and how severe it is. Okay, so now it's actually a beautiful day, but I'm still getting some of these messages that pop up. You might see this, you might not, um, but we'll go ahead and look at the different things uh, that, that could be why, and then we'll talk about why it might be that way. So you might have something that says auto lane change is unavailable. It might say navigate on autopilot is completely unavailable, or you might even get something that's very specific and it'll say that the left pillar is blocked. Um, there's a reason why, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. All right, so sunlight can be blinding. So anything that affects the visibility may impair autopilot functions. Also troubleshooting steps if there's no obvious cause, which you could just wait and see a while if it goes away. You could put the car in park and check and see if you need to clean your cameras. There's another uh, common issue that actually occurred with, with my car maybe about two years ago, and this might happen with you, it might not, uh, but there was a little bit of condensation that built up underneath the B pillar, uh, it's the side uh, pillar camera on your car, a little condensation underneath the glass that got in the way. For me, I just had to make an appointment with Tesla and then they uh, were able to put, I think they called it a breather valve of sorts and that fixed the issue. So with that, like I said, if, if that issue does come up for you, it might say left door, uh, left door pillar camera blocked or blinded. So try to give it a, a second, wait and see if it's still going on for a while. Um, you know, check out if you'll see if there's a little condensation and you can make an appointment with Tesla and they might be able to fix it. Uh, one other tip that I've heard, um, if your garage, I think it also deals with um, humidity. So if your garage is heated, it might deal with different humidity levels. There might be some humidity in there. Once you go outside, temperatures, everything changes. So there's a couple different variables. Uh, one of the, the tips that I heard is you could put a dehumidifier in your garage. Might not be necessary, but if you see this is happening all the time, um, it is a potential way of fixing it. All right, so are there any other tips or tricks for winter driving? Any tips uh, or tricks to setting for different driving conditions, different settings? So one of the biggest things that you could do, and we kind of talked about speed before as being a factor in um, your, your battery range, but also acceleration plays into battery range. Uh, but in safety, modulating your acceleration or braking plays a, pick, a pretty big role into um, the safe driving conditions if, if it's really slushy or snowy outside. So driving slowly and if, if a really great option that's built into our cars, you could use chill mode. And this is going to make it very difficult, um, I, if not nearly impossible to accelerate too strongly. Um, so it's a, it's a great feature, also saves your tires over a long time. So if you're, if you're not a speed demon, you can keep chill mode on all the time, uh, but this is a, a great safety, uh, safety tip for when winter comes around, just to avoid unnecessary uh, hard acceleration. Another great thing that you could do with you is keep your snow uh, scraper or brush in the car with you. Um, I've heard that folks actually uh, prefer keeping it in the car rather than in the trunk or even in the trunk. Just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit safer. But always good, no matter what, good to have that with you. Or even a shovel. You could have a, sh a small shovel. Things get really bad out there. Uh, turn off the side mirror auto fold. This could be if there is a large amount of ice buildup out there. This will prevent any damage from happening to the mirror. Just make it 
so you don't have to worry about it folding or unfolding. It's already good to go. Um, if you're stuck in the snow or uh, mud, there's some a mode called slip start, and this allows the wheels to spin. Um, our traction in our cars is very good. It's very smart, uh, if you know what I mean by smart. It's able to kind of figure out, hey, what's going on? Where do I need to put the right amount of traction, the right amount of uh, torque for each wheel? So realistically, you probably don't even need to use slip start, but there is a mode. I believe it's under the driving section, uh, and it's called slip start, and this will help you um, with, uh, with with traction. Uh, Dennis? Yeah, just one tip on the slip start is if you live in an apartment dwelling or if you're in a parking lot that where the main roads have been plowed, but the spaces are all full of ice, slip start is great for just being able to give very gentle acceleration to get out of uh, a crust of ice and then turn it off and drive normally. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, for those that don't know Dennis, he is from uh, joining us from the Catskills region and knows a plethora about uh, Tesla stuff. So he may join on in while we're doing the presentation and give some really helpful feedback. So thank you, Dennis. All right. Um, yeah, thank you for the, the slip start info. So now, um, also super duper important is checking your tire tread. If you're not going to put on winter tires or uh, change out your tires, just make sure that you have enough tread on your tires to go. Um, and this is something that you should check or rotate at least every 12,000 miles. It does depend on your driving habits. It depends on the tires you have. Um, but check your tire tread. This is one of the biggest factors that go into uh, safety. One of the, the, the biggest things I, I've heard, it's a good way to think about why are tires so important, right? If you think, why are tires so important? If you're a, an athlete and you're running a marathon, are you going to have on running shoes or high heels? What's, what's the best option, right? So having the right shoes on your car, you can think of it that way, uh, make all the difference. And we're going to talk about tires soon, but using appropriate tires for cold weather, very important. All right, so on to tires. My car comes with performance uh, summer sport tires. Can I use them in the winter? Short answer is no, but we're going to get into it. <laughs> All right, so summer performance tires are engineered for traction in warm, hot, ambient temperatures. Just letting some folks in there. Sorry about that. All right. So they have improved speed and agility, increased cornering and braking capabilities, less grooving as to maximize road holding performance better performance in wet uh, driving conditions. And they are primarily meant for use when the average daily temperature is greater than 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I, I won't go too much into this, this whole glass transition, but there's a common term, just if you hear it, uh, they call it glass transition, which is when the temperature drops before, but below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then the traction just goes down, <laughs> down by a lot. Uh, the rubber compound becomes very stiff, very hard and you lose uh, just a lot of traction with the road. I've actually been able to feel this with my own car. I have relatively cheap tires on my car. And when it gets cold out there, um, I can notice that my traction goes down dramatically. And I don't even have sport tires. Oops, sorry about that. All right, so yeah, like I said, the answer is no. If you have sport tires on your car, if you have a performance, and great way to think about this, do I have sport tires? Do I not have sport tires? If you bought a performance Tesla, so if it's a performance Model 3, performance Model Y, um, if you have a Plaid Model S or X, you definitely want to make sure that you get some winter tires. Um, another option, too, to make your life potentially even easier is you can get winter tires and put them on a different set of wheels just so you don't have to put them, you know, get them beaded on and off and whatnot. It's a, another option. All right, so now a little bit more into the details of tires and understanding the terminology. So you have your all seasons. This is the one that we've heard the most of. So they're uh, meant for warm, dry, and wet conditions. They're designed to provide grip during warmer temperatures, and they have a finer uh, tread, which is uh, not so much fit for snow and for slush. It's a harder compound, which lasts longer. So if you want long tires, they're going to be around for a long time. All seasons are great. Now, this is your happy medium for the most part. If you don't want to get winter tires, if that's not something you want to deal with, what you're looking at is something called all weather. So there's all season, which is kind of what we're used to hearing. Now there's all weather. And this is a, a, a term in the tire industry. So for milder winter conditions, and also including heavy rain and snowfall, they have a more blocky texture. And you should be able to see the differences here if, if the quality is good enough on the screen. Um, they have a more of a blocky texture, which helps with uh, gripping snow, but they also have some more of those traits that are meant for uh, warmer seasons. And what's the most important part, probably I would say the difference between all weather and all season is that they're more flexible once the temperatures drop below seven degrees Celsius and down below just the uh, transition, it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Very important that they remain flexible. Like I said before, having them be more flexible allows it to grip the road um, once it's colder out because they're not all stiff and 
whatnot. So now the last part, we're going to take a, a deeper dive into this one in the next part, which are winter tires. And we'll talk about snow tires, winter tires. What we want to uh, primarily use the term is winter tires. These are for harsh winter conditions where there is plenty of snow. They have a much more blocky tread. And um, a good way to think about this is if you're making a snowball, what do you use to get a snowball going? Snow, right? So snow attracts snow, it holds it. So same thing with a winter tire, there's gonna be blocky treads that allow it to hold onto snow, which will give it more traction. And it, just like an all, uh, all weather tire, it's going to stay a lot softer, which is better for just driving around on the roads. All right, so now winter tire, you probably won't need to know so much about this term here, but this is the uh, specific term that the tire industry refers to a winter tire as it's 3P MSF just a little added detail. Um, this is what you're really gonna focus on. It's called the Alpine symbol. And this is going to, it's, it's basically um, like how we're a, an official partner of the Tesla Club program. We have our logo. That means that we're part of the, the program. This tire, this little symbol on the tire means that it is a rated winter tire. And we'll go into who rates it and what that really means. So in Canada, our, our friends uh, just a, a little bit north of us, it is actually required by law in Canada to have winter rated tires on during the winter time. And roughly just fun fact, about 75% of the, the population actually follows that, uh, which means that they, they work well, but also they, they do a good job of sitting. <laughs> All right, so they stick well in the freezing temps and they're a much softer compound. If, um, if you don't have these, um, or you know, friend, you can actually squish the the tread on the tire. It's very squishy, like a like a pencil eraser. That is how soft the compound is. Um, and like I said before, it's meant to handle snow, slush, and even mud. And now here, I'll talk a little bit about the difference between winter tires and snow tires. So we do not want to refer to they're not one and the same. Uh, snow tires is is a little bit more of an older term. And it, it's more of a general term. It refers to tread design, but not necessarily being rated or um, there's no true validity to it. It's just talking about the design. Um, so if, if we're talking winter tires, it's regarded as um, uh, you know a, a valid source to go to or a, a valid tire. I don't know if, if I made too much sense there. Uh, but you're looking for the Alpine logo and um, that is the actual classification there. So now talking about what does it all mean? Why is this uh, super important? So the Mountain Snowflake is a, uh, it's a, pro a joint product between the US Tire Manufacturers Association and the Rubber Association of Canada to establish a meaningful winter time traction baseline. Um, so it's not just something made by the tire industry that's just to take your money. There's, there's truth behind it and it actually does mean something. Um, I'm gonna see if I could hopefully play this video for us on YouTube. Still unsure of um, the benefits of winter tires. Can you hear the audio? Make this perfect. To make things perfectly clear, watch as we put a premium summer tire, all season tire, and Bridgestone winter lamellan tire to the ultimate test at Bridgestone Swedish Proving Ground. The first major difference can already be felt the moment you get started. On snow, the winter tire offers vastly superior traction, accelerating almost instantly out of the blocks, while its all season and summer counterparts take a long time to get moving. The winter tire's larger shoulder blocks, high density siping, and special winter compound deliver dramatically improved grip, stability, and control. The real advantages of winter tires, however, become even more obvious when it comes to maneuvering your vehicle in real life situations. An unexpected obstacle can pose a real danger, as we see here. The summer tires simply don't offer enough lateral grip to handle the car effectively and safely maneuver around the obstacle. Performing the same maneuver at the same speed on Bridgestone winter tires, however, is a completely different story. The tire's lamellan tread really bites into the compacted snow, maintaining perfect control throughout the maneuver to avoid the obstacle safely and effortlessly. To really put the difference in perspective, however, let's test the braking performance of a summer tire, all season tire, and a Bridgestone lamellan winter tire. Driving at the same speed and applying the maximum braking force each tire allows, the differences are rather dramatic. The winter tire brings the car to a complete standstill over just a few meters. The all-season tire predictably takes nearly 80% longer. The real shock, however, is the summer tire's sheer inability to grip the surface. Under challenging winter conditions, they take more than twice as long to stop the car. To see the difference in performance, however, we don't even need extreme winter conditions. Even in ordinary wet weather, the winter tire's wide grooves disperse water much more effectively, offering greater control and holding a tighter line throughout the turn. And if you still need convincing, take a look at what independent experts are saying about Bridgestone's latest generation. 
So it's a little bit of an older video. I think it's from 2013. It's actually quite a bit older, but um, I was just going around on the internet seeing what was, you know, something short and sweet and right to the point. Um, that one, I think, does a fantastic job at showing you what's important. Um, one thing I do want to talk about on that video that's, you know, you might think, okay, great. I could stop short. I could maneuver better. Um, very important to keep in mind that you're here on this call because you care about your safety, your car, you, you want the knowledge. Not a lot of people have all this information or don't seem you know, don't care, right? So it's it's also very important to think about the cars that are behind you just as much as the cars that are in front of you, right? So if, if there's a lot of snow or ice or whatever may be on the road, don't forget to think about the cars that are behind you as well. Um, just an important side note. Let's get back to the slides now. All right. So it's going to snow. How should, and I, I believe that is the end of uh, tires for now. Uh, but we, if you have any questions, we could talk about it at the end too. So it's going to snow. How should I prevent my wipers from freezing? Okay, sorry, there's a pop up there. Uh, so most Teslas have a specifically designed heater element to thaw the wipers. And the Model 3 and Y, you can turn on the defrost in the app, and this will heat up the areas around it, allowing the uh, ice potentially to break. Now, the other option with the Model S and X is they actually have heated, uh, heated wipe heated wiper section um, in the settings that is available. I, I believe this may have been only with the older ones. Um, this is something you might just have to check in your settings, but there is actually a, uh, a, a heating element where the wipers rest that uh, allow it to not get stuck. But defrosting will also do a great job. So there's a service mode in the car that allows it to raise the wipers up and you can clean that um, just to make sure that you're really not gonna get anything stuck there. It's another great option, but never pull the wipers away from the windshield. Uh, this can really damage it, could break it, right? So you want to make sure that you're using the service mode to raise the wipers. Um, and they do not actually bend forward. I think we talked about this during our, our, last, um, our last course, but they don't pull forward like a, a typical wiper would. So don't pull them away, just use service mode to get them to come up a little bit, and then you can make any changes from there. All right. On to voice controls. Uh, voice controls, really great safety option that are built into our cars, right? Rather than messing around with anything on the screen, you can use some of the features uh, through the voice controls. So some of the different options you have, you could uh, say set the windshield wipers to medium. Um, there is an auto mode, but let's say you want to change it to medium, you could do that. Set the temperature to 72 degrees. Turn on the driver's uh, heat, the heated seat. Turn on the heated steering wheel, if you have a heated steering wheel. You can even say silly things like my butt is cold and it'll turn on the heated seat. The uh, front passenger's butt is cold um, or turn on front defrost. There is a ton of different voice controls that you can do. Um, realistically, if, if there's something you could do on the screen, you could do it by voice control, even the camera. If you wanna uh, you know, bring up the camera, press that right scroll wheel button in, um, show me the camera. And there's there's even other ways. It doesn't ever have to be too specific. Um, as you can see with the my butt is cold thing, right? That Tesla thought pretty well about this. And um, there's many different ways to get the same thing done. So make sure you check out the, the different voice controls that you can, you can do. Right, so are the cameras or sensors heated? Defrosting your Tesla. Uh, right in the very front, doesn't matter which model it is, but where the tri-camera assembly is in the front, it has its own heating element built into it. Uh, this is actually completely out of your control. There's nothing you could do to turn it on or off. This is just built into the car. So if, if it snows a little bit, you come out to your car, you'll actually see uh, a little area like that where the snow has melted, um, but completely out of your control. Now, the, uh, all the other sensors and cameras in the car are not heated. Only the tri-camera assembly in the very front actually has heating built into it. The side mirror heat and charge port heaters uh, will turn on by toggling the rear window defrost setting or... Uh, you could you could do this right into the app. So as as far as the charge port, you can um, defrost it by, or you can get it I guess going by using the uh, the defrost setting. So I guess technically the only heated part of the car on the outside is the charge port and the cameras, or not the cameras, sorry the mirrors. <laughs> um, so I came back to my car and I found the charge port unlocked. Is it broken? So if the temperature is below forty one degrees. And if it's a pre-2021 Model 3 that's not currently charging, the port will remain unlocked to prevent freezing. Uh, important to note that it has to be a pre-2021 Model 3 because those did not have the heated, uh, heating elements built into that charge port area. If the charge port latch is frozen and, can't, and you can't remove or insert the charge cable, uh, use the mobile app to precondition on high for 30 to 45 minutes. It might not need to be that long, but given that it's on the outside, 
it's going to take a while uh, for that to come through. So it could, could be around 30 to 45 minutes. Um, not always needed, but if there was a bad ice storm the night before, it's a good option. And 30 to 45 minutes of using the heat compared to having to, you know, well, I break the charge port. I can't even get it open. It, go ahead and do the preconditioning. <laughs> All right, so Model Y and newer Model 3 have a charge port heater enabled by preconditioning the car or toggling the rear defrost. And I believe this also goes for the SNX. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it is with the Model 3 and Y. My door handles are frozen. I think we talked a little bit about this in part one, but my door handles are frozen and my windows are stuck up. What should I do? To prevent freezing of handles, the charge port, mirrors, windows, uh, go ahead and toggle the defrost or preheat the car on high. If you don't have any time to preheat or you forget, you can make a fist and bump the handle, this is the door handle specifically, with the bottom of your hand on the handle to break the ice. This is the thicker part of the handle. Just make a fist, use this part of your hand, and break the ice if it's not moving for you. Um, I would say nine times out of 10, that, that'll, that'll work. And it really, you don't have to punch a car, you don't have to be aggressive with it, but it's really just to break that little layer of ice um, if your thumb isn't able to do that itself. Um, we'll talk about a, a couple of different products. I, I believe Dennis has something he could share. John is on the call too, I believe, and he can share some different products too when we get to the, uh, we can even actually, uh, if you guys wanna unmute your mics now and maybe talk about some of the, the products you have or uh, whatnot, you're, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay, John, are you up? Because I, I can go if you want me to. Sure, yeah, thanks. Yeah, go, go okay, ahead, because I'm going to go grab my uh, uh, supply. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to paste this into chat right this second, and then you'll see what I'm saying, and you'll have it if you want to copy and paste this anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm pasting it into chat and going enter, and hopefully that's it. It looks like this. It's yellow, Prestone, uh, ice and frost shield. Uh, this is good. The night you have to store it inside because there's enough moisture in it that it can freeze in the car ironically but what this is for is you spray it on all glass surfaces uh, from the outside of the car uh, the night before you're going to have a freezing frost or ice or that terrible really light mist that gets into all the crevices and makes everything difficult to handle what it does is when the sun is applied or your defrosting is applied, it speeds the, the defrost cycle on glass surfaces and even on door handles or even on the charge port. So I just did that this evening. Um, that's it. Yes. Most any auto store would have this. Uh, John, I think. And OK, there you go. Oh, you're, you're, uh, you're on mute. Okay, how's that? Perfect, there we go. Here we go, here's my product. Oh, thanks, Dennis, for showing the, yours. This is called Gumi Pflege. It's a German product. And I was going to um, put the link into the chat. What you do with this, it's a kind of a roll-on uh, daub on the sensor, almost like an old deodorant. And you run this along your door seals where the windows meet or on the entire door seal around the car. And it's basically a restoration fluid. So once it's on there, a little bit goes a long way. You just take like a rag and you apply the rest of it, you know, thoroughly working it into the door seal. And by golly, this stuff is like magic. Your windows tend not to stick if they get cold and, and the rubber gasket uh, around your doors tends to last longer doesn't tend to um, vulcanize, so to speak. So again, it's called Gumi Flega, and uh, I don't know if I got it into the chat yet, but it should be there. There it is. It's about 11 bucks for the last few, a couple of seasons. Perfect, thank you so much, John. And Dennis, thank you too. Um, so now the other part is you could always use what you have on hand. So if you have WD-40, I think just about every, every household uh, has WD-40 on them in, in the garage, somewhere hidden in the garage, right? Um, you could even spray this onto the uh, pivots, the door handle pivots, and even around the rubber seals. If that's what you have, that's what you have, you could use it, won't damage it. Um, now, worst case scenario, if the window doesn't lower, you've uh, not lower, you could press it down gently after opening it 
before closing the door. We talked about this last time. If that door, if that the window isn't going down uh, before you close the door, it can end up doing damage to the uh, the Chrome or the newer, all the newer Teslas have the blackout area, but it could end up scuffing that up pretty badly. So this stuff, I've had my car for three years. It, it mostly it has been garage kept, um, you know, at night. But you know, if, if I commute to work, um, I, I really never had any issues when I when I commuted. So really not an issue. Um, these are all preventative, right? Prevent it, what is it? Prevention is the best medicine. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. Don't, don't think that this is a huge overwhelming thing. Oh my gosh, why did I buy a Tesla? These are all great preventative measures. What, well, not yet, but- Can I oh, do just uh, one more thing? Is, yeah. If it's okay, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, just one more thing. Since uh, it's so trivial that we have these different products and the preheating and all of this to open the charge port if you should be parked outside and it ices over, especially if there's this little tiny, uh, tiny mist that then freezes as tiny precip. A credit card <laughs> slid gently through all the crevices around it. 90% of the time we'll pop it open. Sure, thanks. <laughs> All right, so winter is over. Obviously, not quite yet. It basically just started. Has has it even started yet? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it depends on where you're at in the state. It was thunderstorming here in Albany just a few days ago. It was a crazy thunderstorm. So winter's over in a few months, right? Thank goodness. Uh, should I get my brake calipers and pads cleaned and lubricated? Super important here. Yes, you should get your brakes cleaned. Um, if you haven't, if you're like me, get your brakes clean. Do it. <laughs> Um, and like we just said, prevention is the best medicine and in cars and, in, and just like in everywhere else, uh, a little bit of prevention here, a little bit of money up front will save you a lot over the long term. So in this region, the Northeast, it's highly recommended that you get this service annually, unless it's an extremely mild winter, maybe it's not needed as much. Uh, dirt and rust can accumulate over uh, during the winter time and your regenerative braking uh, de depends on how much battery, we talked about in part one, how to get, make sure that you can actually use your regenerative braking uh, means that you're gonna be doing less actual braking, which means more building up of gook. Um, which can do more damage, right? If you're not using your brakes, all that stuff is going to build up and it can do more damage over that short period of time. Uh, so basically keeping your brakes healthy and safe is going to maximize the life of them as well and probably uh, won't leave too much of a, uh, a void in your bank account if things go really badly. <laughs> all right, so that is actually it for our... Oh, actually, sure. Uh, John, I know you, you have a ton of information on this one. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm uh, going into my fourth winter with Model 3, and it's just a rear-wheel drive, but that really shouldn't matter. Here's the thing. Every year, I get the brake service done by Tesla Mobile Service. Uh, it varies in price. Sometimes it's like 60 or 70. Sometimes it's over 100. I don't know how they price it, but it's worth it because what happens is your rear brakes have a, an e-brake, an emergency electric kind of brake that applies, and sometimes that will stick when you're driving off in the morning and you'll feel this big thud. And what's happening is that tiny layer of rust that, that Stephen mentioned um, almost fuses that emergency brake or parking brake to the rotor. And when it releases, it can be very alarming because the car will lurch forward and it can almost deform the little clips that hold that brake pad onto the um, caliper. And so once a year, when you get your tires rotated, that's also a good time to do both at once. It's, it's peace of mind because a brake job to, on a Tesla is going to cost you into the thousands and thousands of dollars. And, and John, I think you said you, you knew someone, right, that had uh, had an issue with that. They didn't get their, their, their service done and it ended up costing them quite a bit in the end. So I, I, I should learn from that one myself here before that happens. Uh, Jeffrey, you have a question on this? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I joined a little late. Uh, oh, you're fine. Dealing with something at work. Um, I have rear-wheel drive as well, a Model 3. Um, what, can someone explain, if you did already, I apologize, but the slip start feature in the menu, I kind of noticed it a while ago, but obviously it says something about snow. Dennis, you want to go ahead and uh, talk about that one again? Sure. Thank you. I, uh, again, my, I do it by hand, so at the moment I can't remember exactly where it is in the menu, but it's uh, probably a service menu, could be in the driving menu, but in any event, the best example is if you're parked outside, either because that's the way it is where you live, or if you parked outside, let's say at an office or a, a shopping mall, and they've plowed the main roads, but not the space you're sitting in. So you're sitting in anywhere from, you know, an inch to four inches of ice. 
you just touch slip start and what it does is just put a huge governor on the the torque of the accelerator so a little bit of accelerator will not spin the wheels furiously it'll just creep out of the space perfectly and the worst storm it's always worked for me then once you're on a decent plowed surface you just hit the screen to turn it off and go your merry way Thank you, Dennis. And I, I believe it's in the driving driving settings in the car, right? That's how you get it? Okay, perfect. Thank you, uh, appreciate it, thank you. Uh, so that is the end of the presentation. I just have a couple pieces on here if you want to uh, email or just the, the, uh, the club website, anything else on there. Um, if you did miss the first part of the presentation, this will all be recorded and on our club's YouTube account. Uh, so you can watch it on there. Same thing with part one that's already on there right now. Uh, but now we're gonna go ahead and get into the Q&A. So uh, for that, if there are questions in the chat, I'll just go ahead and read them off. Um, or you could use the raise hand icon like Mr. Shapiro did right there. And I'll just go ahead and call on you in the order that they come in. So let me go ahead and um, get this to the full size stop share. And all right, there you go. Uh, Mr. Shapiro, you can go ahead and ask your question. Let me unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Steve, thanks for doing all this. I say it every time, but I missed the first part. But are there any precautions or anything we should take with a battery with the cold weather? Maybe it was discussed in the first part. Yeah, definitely. We, we talked about that a little bit more in the first part. Uh, a big thing, what you definitely don't want to do is leave it at a, uh, a low state of charge, never good for the battery in general. Um, but just being outside in the cold, if you're not using the car, it's just sitting around for, for most of the time, um, that's going to eat away at the battery a lot more quickly. Um, so just like our bodies, right, we have homeostasis. We want to be kept at, I think, what is it? 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know what it is with our cars, but the same thing with the batteries. They want to be kept at a happy, uh, temperature, right? So that's going to use battery, going to use it more of a time. Um, just deplete, right, deplete what you have. Um, we talked a little bit about sentry mode, um, and how that takes up roughly about a percent per hour. So if you're at the airport, you're leaving your car there, you might want to take off sentry mode if it's, um, even potentially in the summertime just depends, right? If, if it's, if it's not a great airport, maybe you're like, Hey, I could, I could sacrifice some range when I come back home. Um, it's, it's totally up to you, but, um, yeah. And, and the biggest thing is if you have the, the option, leave your Tesla plugged in all the time. Um, this is recommended what, no matter what season it is. Um, so what's going to happen, especially in the winter time, it's going to use energy to keep those batteries at a happy, warm state, rather than using the battery, to keep the batteries warm, right? Draining the battery um, percentage that's in the car, it's gonna pull it from the grid and then that will just keep the, the batteries uh, at the level that you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so once again, if you have a question, you can use the raise hand icon. And if not, I'll go ahead and uh, read through some of the ones in the, the chat. All right, uh, part one is on our club's YouTube channel. If you just go to YouTube and you type in T-O-C-N-Y-S, I believe it's the most recent video on there. And it's just uh, uh, Tesla Winter Prep Course Part 1, I believe is the title of it. Um, okay, here's I have a question. question. Sure. I don't see a raised hand icon. Um, I think it depends on what device you're on. There might be like three little dots on the bottom, but uh, no, okay. no problem at all. Uh, just, in general, just a general tire question. Um, when I was at the Tesla dealership in Latham or the repair center, they recommended changing the tires every 20,000 miles so it would be about $300 a tire plus two to 300 of alignment. So like a $1,500 job. I'm putting on 20,000 miles a year. So I'm just checking in with everyone here that this is, we're talking about a $1,500 cost per year. Um, so I, I think, it, I think uh, so the, the big thing I said in the beginning of this too is uh, just, it helps out Tesla, helps out us as well, but you don't need to get tire service done through Tesla. Um, it can be done. I, I'm right here in Latham too. I've done, I think pretty much all of my service for tires through Mavis. Um, I do educate them on how to properly jack up the car because if they're not using the little jack pads, it could do damage to the pack. So you want to make sure that they really understand what they're doing. Um, you can also just take it to a certified shop, um, but I'll, I'll let someone else provide some input on that as well. That's that's my piece of uh, feedback. If anyone else wants to, to chime in. And is okay. that what everyone does? Twenty Every 20,000 miles, change all the tires? Use 40 or 50,000. <laughs> um. Barth, is your question on that specifically or, is, or not? No, I just wanted to chime in on this discussion. I think sure. it really depends on the type of tire you get. Um, I would recommend maybe checking out all weather or all season tires. It gets more, um, get some more miles out of your, out of your buck. So 20,000 sounds pretty low to be honest with you. So, yep. and some yep. of these tires actually offer like guaranteed, 
you know, 30, 40,000 miles. I would check that out as well. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And uh, Douglas, another big thing too, that plays into it is um, how, how you drive, right? So my, shouldn't even admit this, my first set of tires, I went through at 6,000 miles. I, it was my first ever performance S car, it was a dual motor model three, I still have it. I, uh, I was at, 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 a, at a local EV event a few years ago and someone's like, you need new tires. Although I just got the car. Let me show you. You need so realistically, um, it's not twenty thousand miles per se. That's like an average, right? Just kind of a, a mean what it might be. Um, so I would say check. You can get a uh, tire depth gauge. They're probably at most like five dollars. Um, so that would be another option. So twenty thousand is this number that exists, right? Um, but it doesn't necessarily correlate to the truth. Um, not that they're lying. The same. I hope that makes sense. Um, right. Okay. All right. Um, I think uh, yeah, Albert, you have a question. Yeah, someone said that uh, Tesla does mobile cleaning up brakes. But I was looking in the app, I don't see anything in the service option is for brakes, it's just tires. Uh, John, do you have- to... Yeah, you have to do a memo. I should have been clear about that. Thanks for reminding me. When you set up your service, you have to go, I believe it says other service, and then you can fill out in the memo and you just say, I want my uh, annual brake caliper service. And they'll know what it is. Thank you, John. All right. Um, I'm going to do one from the chat. So I lose about two points of tire pressure from 43 to 41 degrees as it gets colder, but goes back up uh, when I drive about an hour. Do I need to input more air when it goes down? Um, so yeah, James, so this, this great question, uh, the colder it gets, the, the more well, I guess I should, I don't want to use double negatives and positives, the less um, PSI we have in our tires, right? So the colder it gets, the less PSI we have in there, just the, the air becomes um, more dense, right? So that we need to add a little bit more in there. Uh, so as you're, as you're driving, right, those tires are getting warmer and warmer, and it probably is heating up the, the air that's in the tires, expanding it. Um, so to answer your question, I, I think our, our tires are supposed to be at like 42 or so. Um, if you're over or under a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. Um, probably that the most important thing is that you're not under by too much or over by too much, right? Like I said, you're over under by a, a few PSI. It's not going to make a, a dramatic uh, difference. Um, what I would mostly pay attention to is just the temperature. Uh, you know, as, as if, if it is going to be a cold winter, it's down into the teens or in the negatives, you know, keep an eye on that and your car will tell you to, um, if you do need to put more in there, but if it's just by a few, don't, don't, uh, don't fret that too much. All right. Uh, Sam, you have a question. Yep. Hi. Um, so I, my car is pretty bad in the winter. I have a model X with the 22 inch sport wheels and tires, but I was told I can't get any sort of all season or winter tire for the 22 inch. Is that true? Um, is it a performance that you have? Yeah. Oh, no, no. The model X is not the performance, not performance. one. Okay. The, the reason I asked is because I, I believe depending on your uh, brake rotor, the, the, the rotor size for the brakes, um, that may play a role in different wheels that you can put on there. Um, but no, you, you should be able to change the, uh, the, the wheels that you have on there. Um, especially Maybe they it's... just don't make a lot of 22 inch in the all weather or snow. They do, but they're going to cost you. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay to pay for it. I just can't seem to find them. Just look up um, uh, winter tire 22 in your Google. You'll find them. Yeah. That's, okay, uh, yeah. I called three different tire places, you know, done tire, went through them all, and they said no. I would get those tires. Touch. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, sorry. I would get, I would look into 20s or 21s, to be honest with you. Um, smaller, smaller tire sizes are actually better in the snow anyway, so. Can you put those on 22-inch wheels, though? No, well, you would have to get a whole new set of wheels. Yeah, okay. I think there's two different issues there. I, th I know that on performance models and maybe some others as well, they have bigger calipers. And with the if they have the bigger calipers, then a lot of the wheels don't uh, physically get around the calipers. And you'll probably have a hard time finding like steels, for example, to replace your, your wheels. But I think if you stay with the same wheel and put new rubber on the same wheel, you might have better luck that way. Okay. Great. Great input. Yeah, um, exactly that. I just looked at TireRack.com where I buy all my tires, and they've got a nice set of Conti Winter Contacts that'll fit your wheels, no problem. They're three seventy five really? a pop, though. Last time I trust on tire. Thanks. <laughs> Good thing. 
Um, really cool comment that if no one saw this from Helltown Tech uh, from Kerwin, it, you could also even consider putting uh, nitrogen in your tires instead of just basic air from uh, stewards or whatnot. Probably going to cost you just a tiny bit more. I doubt it's terribly expensive, um, but that could help out with pressure swings. So really cool suggestion right there. Thanks. Uh, Jeffrey, question? Uh, yeah. Um, again, sorry if you've already gone over it, but uh, chains, do you guys recommend that on the cars or sometimes people say yes or no? Um, I think it might depend on where you live, to be totally honest. Same thing with the, with the studded tires. I'm, I, I'm not an expert on, you know, once it gets this, this deep here, uh, if anyone else has some, some information. Yeah. On this. You, you don't have clearance on most Tesla models to carry uh, regular chains. You can do the studs if you have to have them, but I, you'll rip up your uh, wheel arch liners. You don't have the clearance. So yeah, I, I would check to uh, Jeffrey, depending on where you live, um, what you can put on your, your, uh, your, your tires. I, and another good option too, is you could always keep chains in your trunk, right? If it's that bad out, obviously those chains aren't going to be making any contact probably with the road anyway. Um, same thing. I, I suggest always keeping a small shovel in your trunk too. Um, really good, good option there. All right. Uh, can Thank you put the wipers in service mode via a voice command? I don't think you can. Uh, that'd be much faster when it's freezing out. And you need to wipe the snow. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. I don't think you can through the voice command button. Always worth a shot, um, but not to my knowledge. I think you have to go into service. It's like the last tab or second to last tab, um, and then from there it says uh, wiper mode or some, something along those lines. It's it's fairly uh, obvious. But yeah, to my knowledge, you can't do it from there. But I, I got to give that a try. It's a good question. Uh, from Sophia, cool question here. What is bio uh, bio uh, weapon defense mode? So I, as far as I know, every car except for the that's produced it, except for the three has this built in, including the Y. Uh, it didn't, but now it does. Um, this is it's a it's a fairly deep question here. I, I'll try not to go too far into it because I, I want to stick on um, on winter weather. But this creates a positive pressure in the cabin of the vehicle, making it. Um, nearly impossible for anything to get inside of the car. There's also a HEPA air filter, which filters out like 99.99 X percent. It's a HEPA is, is an actual rating, just like how we talked about um, with, uh, with, with the, the winter tires, right? With that logo, the Alpine logo um, that goes into that too. So basically if there's a, a wildfire outside, if there is um, just smoke. If there's just gar if you're driving, there's this one place in Jersey where it always smells absolutely terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically, it's it's a really good filter for the car. Um, every car except for the three has it today. And to my knowledge, the Model Three has like the second to best filter out there, probably just behind uh, the other Teslas. All right. Um, more questions. Let's see. Remember again, if you, if you want to raise your hand, there should be a raise hand icon, and if not, there should be three little dots possibly, and then you can get to it from there. Right. Uh, why on the Model Y is there no blind spot warning built into the mirrors? Yeah, um, so that's definitely a, right, a hardware piece. So it's not something that's literally just impossible to do through a software update. But uh, what they do have is on the center screen on right where it shows your car, depending on which side it's on. Um, and it may only do this when you have your turn signal on. I'm not 100% sure, but the line um, will line up, it'll light up red, meaning that you have someone in your blind spot. Um, if you have, if you, if you purchase the full self-driving or from, if your car is older and you have uh, enhanced autopilot, another really great option too, is you could just put your turn signal on and it'll take the lane for you. Um, always still check to make sure there's no one there though. Uh, but yeah, as, as to why, I guess it was probably just an executive decision that they made. If I can jump in for just a second yeah, on absolutely. rearview mirrors, this is one of my favorite little uh, peeves. Um, many, many people set their outside mirrors so they can see the side of their own car. It's an easy reference point, but I will guarantee you 100% you have never been hit by the side of your own car. What you should do is set your rear view mirrors and together with the one inside, such that when a car passing you on the left leaves your vision in the rear view mirror on your windshield, it becomes visible in that outside mirror. It will stay there until it comes up and enters your peripheral vision. There is no need for a blind spot if your mirrors are properly oriented. And I don't know why they don't teach that when they teach kids how to drive cars, because people are always setting their mirrors to look at the side of their own car. No point, it won't hit you. 
Thank you, John. John is a uh, an expert when it comes to cars. Seriously, like he has. How many have you done, John? Have, have you have you uh, have I done? Well, re remade, finished. Um, that you you've brought back to life. I don't know, a few dozen. I don't yeah, know. pretty cool. If, you, if you're in uh, you're in the Albany area, right, John? Uh, north of Troy. Yeah. North of Troy. Yeah. If you're if you're in this area, get make sure you get to meet John. Really cool guy. Um, works on a bunch of classics. Um, all right, so I went to Dunn Tire in the fall for tires. My local Mavis won't do Tesla. Yep, there's um, there's actually like a, a Mavis by me that wouldn't do it. And then there was another Mavis that, uh, that would. So if you have multiple Mavises around you, check and see. Um, will they be okay to do the brake cleaning in the spring? So I would have to assume that it's, most brake cleaning is probably just about the same, right? That, that piece of the car, even though it's an EV, that part of the car is just like it is for, for most cars. Um, brake cleaning to my knowledge, John, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you want to do this before the winter, correct or no? You want to do it with Tesla because if there's a fault in the system, when that e-brake closes, okay, if you have the wheel off, um, you're going to need a Tesla technician with a laptop to resolve it. That's just the way that it works. There's a certain code that they have to put in. So I would not trust brake cleaning to anyone but Tesla just for that reason. And yes, fall is usually the best time. And I think I already posted that when you do your winter wheel changeover, that's the best time. And because you can kill two birds with one stone, you have the tires and wheels off anyway. So just swap them. Perfect. Uh, Ruth, I guess you have maybe a follow up on that. You have your hand raised. Let's see what you, you might be on mute. I think it is. Sorry about that. Oh, there you go. Um, when Tesla does their. Um, does the, the mobile stuff, will they be able to put the tires on rims or do I have to have rims for them? So in other words, if, if they come to change my tires, is that what John was talking about? When they change your tires over in the winter, they can do the brakes yeah. at the same time? Good point, Ruth. But yes, you want to have the winter wheels and winter tires all in one. So you basically have two separate sets of wheels. They will bolt off the summer wheels and bolt on the winter ones and the tires are are already mounted they're already oh, mounted does it make sense yeah, yeah. so yeah, you're yeah, yeah. an extra expense but think about it this way you're buying an extra set of wheels the rims that are going to last a long long time and by by taking by keeping the same set of, of rims for the summer and the winter you're always going to have to go to a tire shop and have the tires removed and that bead is going to get weak and more than likely they're going to put it back on, potentially scratching the rims. But if you have a separate set of rims with tires on them, they just bolt them off and bolt them on. Yeah. I mean, those, that it couldn't be any easier. So I think it's worth the extra investment. 100%. Yeah, I think, you're, I think you're probably right. And so do I get those from Tesla, the rims? You could buy them anyone. Yeah. If, you, um, if they're in stock, but maybe somebody else has a better experience. I bought mine directly from them, but there are probably some aftermarkets that are out there now. Yeah, there's a comment right here um, that says check out T-Sport Line. I, I definitely stand by that too. T-Sport Line specializes really in making Tesla wheels. Um, they might even have, they might have winter uh, packages. That's a big might though. Uh, Tesla does have winter wheel tire packages, but they're constantly out of stock. So you can check on their website, but most likely I'm just check on T-Sport Line. Um, yeah, they were out of stock when I looked at them. So I got them at done because we got a discount through the Tesla club. Oh, great. Um, so I, I, I can have a suggestion. Um, so we have, uh, if you're local here in Rochester, we have a, a EV parts guy here. Uh, you can always buy, um, you know, um, uh, used wheels uh, that you can use it for snow tires. And also remember that when you buy the wheel, there's also a pressure sensors that go with the wheel uh, so that uh, if you don't have that, you buy the wheel only without a pressure sensor, uh, you're gonna get the uh, errors uh, uh, when you after you put in the wheel because they are not able to find the sensor. So be careful with that. Uh, so uh, so if you buy from a used tire uh, that's been from another you know salvage vehicle whatever, uh, usually come with the uh, pressure sensor and it could save you another sixty bucks uh, for new sensors. And Patrick is right about the pressure sensors, but be careful. They switched the type of sensor when last year or two years ago on some of them so that they're now called they're the so-called Bluetooth pressure sensors and the previous generation were different. So make sure you talk to an expert um, with your particular model year to make sure you're getting the right pressure sensor. 
Okay, because I have I have a 2021, the second generation. So um, I, I'll probably end up buying them from Tesla just because I feel safer. Gotcha. All around, yeah. it'll be a lot less work. Yeah, and I think uh, John mentioned, and I actually did the math with one of my buddies a few years ago, but over you know the long term, if you recently bought your car, right, if you have a Tesla, most likely it's fairly new. It's got to be fairly new. Um, long term, you're having this car for five years, six years, it's probably going to save you money to buy new wheels and just put them, uh, you know, get the winter tires put on those wheels. It's just going to cost you less over time. Right. And they're is a it, lot heavier. <laughs> yes. Um, is it good to take you. off? You're welcome. Is it good to take off the original wheel cover for the... Um, I think you put model three over here. Mine is a new car with almost 1500 miles. So if you have that aero cover, if that's what you're talking about there, James, um, you can keep that on all the time if you want to. The, the one thing that I've heard about that cover is there's little metal clips. I believe they're metal. Uh, at least they were on mine. Mine's a little bit older, but oh, today, fun fact, today is my uh, third anniversary of having my model three. So <laughs> happy birthday. All right. Um, so, uh, so those aero covers that are on your car, um, I've heard from people that the, the crap that's in there in the wintertime, right? That salt and grime and all that gook, um, it gets into where those clips are and just a little bit of movement, the vibration while you're driving can rub away at the, um, the, the paint or the, the coating that's on the wheels and do a little damage. Um, so I actually in the past and really for, for quite a while now, I've had my aero covers off, uh, but important thing to think about this too, is that in the winter time, you're going to lose more range uh, than normal. So having the aero covers on give you some more range back. Uh, so it really depends on you. I haven't seen any wear on mine from having them on and, you know, the first full year or so. Um, so it really comes down to just, you know, preference on you, it, or you could maybe even do a little bit of research too on that. Thanks. All right. Um, let me some more questions. Okay. Uh, do the aftermarket places have the hockey pucks to lift the car safely? Uh, so if you're talking about like Mavis or Firestone, I would say, I don't want to be wrong here, so I'll just say 50-50 chance here. I would say 50% of all, you know, Mavis's and Firestone's probably have, probably don't know that they need to use a certain puck to lift the car. I'm not undermining them. I'm just saying that they really don't get Teslas that often. Um, and to my knowledge, our cars are the only ones that use that kind of uh, jack piece, right? So what I would do is if you're going to go to an aftermarket place, you know, third place, third party place, uh, bring the pucks with you. You could buy them on Amazon. You could literally just go on Amazon, type in, um, you know, model three hockey pucks and it'll come up. You'll see it. It's like a little hockey puck with a, a nub on it. Um, you could go on a couple different websites too, um, to, to buy those. They're really roughly all the same thing. Um, and then you'd want to show them, Hey, you need to make sure that you put this in, you know, these little points over here, if you're going to jack up the car. Um, one other point though, while we're on that, before we move on to the next question, um, a lot of the places out there that I brought my car to, to get that done, their lifts are actually already a little bit too high and they weren't able to get the hockey pucks plus the, the lift to lift up the car. Um, there just wasn't enough clearance and my car is not that low. It's just, you know, standard height. Um, so you might run into some weird things by going to aftermarket, uh, locations, just a little bit of an input on that. Uh, William, you put, who is that contact in Rochester? Uh, I, I, I would have to know who you're, who you're referring, what, what, what that was about. If you want to unmute your microphone. Um, oh, yep. Uh, Patrick made a great mention here. We didn't talk about interior fogging. So if you are having interior fogging, there is a defrost button. So if that happens to you, there's a defrost button on the bottom right. Um, if it's blue, that'll get rid of the fog. And if it's red, you tap it again, then that will uh, do the defrosting action. The reason I, I, I mentioned that, Stephen, is because um, usually if you keep fogging, it, it, it'll, you're still going to see the fan is getting high power. Or you're going to use heat situation. You're going to draw some power. So one of the tricks to uh, able to defrost faster, if you have a sunroof, just crack it open, okay? And that's, you know, the whole idea is to improve circulation in the inside of the cabin. Uh, so it will help the defogging itself uh, much faster, therefore using us less power. So you can either, if you don't have a sunroof, then you just crack the back window open, uh, both side of it, just a little bit. You don't want to be open a lot, but promote airflow inside and it will get defogged much faster. So this is something that probably um, uh, you will see more happen when it comes winter time. Thank you, Patrick. Um, here's a, a question from Josh. So having tr uh, terrible trouble with range, 2021 Model Y, uh, blew almost a full charge going only 160 miles from Binghamton to Syracuse and back every week. 
fine in the summer, uses 70% in the winter, nearly 100% uh, tip. So if you weren't on our first one, the biggest, biggest thing, and the only thing you can really control uh, when it comes to range and, and driving and whatnot, uh, speed. So if, if you're going much above the speed limit, um, that's going to have a, a pretty substantial impact on you. Um, so that's the, the biggest thing that you could try to do is just control that is just lower the speed limit on your car. Um, not saying go 40 and a 60, definitely don't do that. That's dangerous unless it's snowing and then you should go 40 and a 60. Um, but yeah, pretty much that that's the, the biggest thing that you can be in control of. Um, check your PSI and your tires if they're too low, which it's winter time. So they might be lower than normal. Uh, make sure that you have those filled up to a believe it depends on which one you have. I don't want to be wrong, but if you open up your door, it'll tell you the PSI that they should be at. Um, I, I mine, at least it's 42. So check yours, see if, uh, if you're at the right level. Um, that would be my tips on uh, range if you're having that issue. Uh, hey, Josh, I'm colorblind too. Um, so yeah, um, the, the, well, I guess I'm red, green, I'm due to note, but yeah, your question. Uh, so the defroster has different colors. So yeah, there's the little windshield icon in the bottom right. You tap it once and it turns blue. You tap it again and it turns red. Um, and you tap it one more time and it turns gray. Um, you might be able to use the voice command. If, 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 uh, if you can't see the colors that well with that, I would say uh, turn on front, you know, defroster, turn on front, um, I guess, what would it be called? The fogging? Um, what would be the other term for when it's blue? I'm not, not or, yeah, blue would be defogging, I guess. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Um, but yeah, tapping it um, once makes it go to blue. Tapping it again goes to red. One more time, it goes to, uh, to, to gray. Perfect. Oh, great uh, comment here from David. Um, basically, another point is you'll hear it. I guess there's a difference on the Model 3. It's much louder on red. So that's another great way to, to differentiate. Um, uh, Mr. Shapiro? Steve, yeah. Okay, nothing about winter. It's just okay. uh, some general questions uh, since I'm asking some of you longtime Tesla owners. Mine is just about eight months old and I've been enjoying it. I'm on Long Island. But how, how, how long would tires last, brakes last? And you don't need any engine service, obviously, but the suspension and the other things of the car, they have to last, for, there's a lifetime to it. Do you have any estimate of what the lifetime would be on these? Say the, the suspension, brakes, tires. Patrick, if, uh, if, if you're still here, if you, if you want to give some feedback on that, Patrick is also a big car guy and right. John. Or, uh, Patrick, maybe if you stepped away, uh, Harry, I know you know a great amount about this. John, uh, Corey too, if, if you have some, some uh, input on here about kind of the longevity of, of parts. Yeah, the, the brakes are actually supposed to last pretty much for, uh, they estimate 100,000 miles. And again, it depends a little bit on your driving habits. Um, if you're using regen more um, than say someone else, then you'll get more um, you'll get more time uh, on the brakes. Um, they shouldn't. They're they're different than most car brakes. Um, they're special. The uh, coatings and all are specially formulated uh, for Teslas because they know that regen is going to be a factor. And they don't. If you notice, you don't see rust on them. I see rust on my my wife's uh, Volkswagen all the time. If it, it sits, um, it sits for a couple of weeks. Um, you don't see rust on the on the Tesla rotors. You're um, not leaving it outside, then, are you? <laughs> I sure um, see rust it, on mine. Well, but um, I, I oh really? Because I I don't see any on mine. But yes, I mine is garage, but so is the Volkswagen in the winter. So yeah. <laughs> Um, what about the <clears> suspensions? <throat> what about the suspension? When do you have to think you I, have to worry about that? I um I did have it depends on if you have air suspension or not. I don't know. I can't tell you in regard to regular suspension, but I did have a failure, a pump failure on uh, my Model X air suspension. That was a 2016 model, and it failed in 2021. Actually, earlier this year. Um, and, um, but they, it was under warranty. So they, they completely replaced uh, the pump, the valve and all four, all four units. They were surprised to find that all four um, suspension units were, um, were not, were malfunctioning. So um, yeah, you can have suspension problems, especially with the air suspension. If you don't have the air suspension, then it's probably just going to be um, what you would normally expect to see in a car. Well, um, the model as far as tires go, I, does the Model I, 3 have air suspension? 
Nope. Does the Model sorry, 3 have air suspension? No. No. Mine doesn't. Yeah. So, and that's that's actually a good thing. They were they're actually planning to put back in the day. They were planning to put air suspension in the Model Three. Um, I believe they even changed part of it to make it so it could have accepted it uh, when when they changed designs over time. Um, but they decided against it. So yeah. And and I, I to my knowledge too, I believe just what we have will last longer than air uh, than an air suspension, and it's a lot significantly cheaper to replace uh, when that does come. So and uh, to to answer to your question too on, on my part, probably depends on uh, driving. Um, you're just the environment that you're in, right? If you're in New York City and there's tons of potholes everywhere and, you know, it's most of that, um, probably going to do, you know, more damage much sooner uh, than if you're in Florida where it's not many potholes. Or, yeah. or that's, Rochester, that's, we have a lot of potholes too, yeah. yeah. That, that's yeah. always, yeah. And as far as tires go, now I had, I replaced the tires on my Model X at uh, 22,000 miles and that was primarily due to the fact that I got a uh, close to sidewall puncture um, on one of them and they were getting worn. They would probably have gone 25. Um, I did just replace the tires, the rear tires on my Model 3, although the front tires were just fine. Um, I'm finding that you do have to rotate those. I won't be able to do that on the Model X because they're different sizes, but um, front to rear, but on the Model 3, they're the same size front to rear, and I did not rotate, and I should have. So you can get more mileage if you rotate your tires like you would on a normal car. Again, that depends on whether you have um, the same size front and rear. Um, the front tires are fine, had plenty of tread. The rear tires were down to the wear bars, so I replaced two of the tires. Oh, that was at 15,000 and change. Um, I see one last question in the chat. Uh, by the way, we are over our, our, our time, but we can keep going if you have more questions. Um, so from Hugo, does someone have experience using different braking model uh, modes, sorry, uh, when driving in the snow and ice? I usually uh, drive with standard hold, but I am not sure if using creep or roll would be better. Um, I think we might have kind of touched on this last time. Hugo, probably more importantly than the different braking modes you're using. And if you have a newer Tesla, this um, isn't something you can control, but for some reason on the older ones, mine is about to, yeah, today three years old. Um, there was two different regenerator, regenerative braking modes. Uh, one is standard, and I believe we figured out last time it's called low. Um, so you you want to make sure uh, it helps in the winter time if you keep your region on low. Uh, just if if, you're, if there's a little bit of snow or slush or whatever it is, rather than a hard break, it will um, be much you know safer. Uh, but as far as different braking modes, I I really I don't think there's too much of a difference there. Um, roll would probably be the one I would avoid though. That would be the one that I would avoid. All right. Um, how do you rotate same size back to front or cross? I believe, I believe it could be wrong here. And if, uh, uh, John, you might have some information on this too. Um, but I believe it depends if it's all wheel drive or if it's rear wheel drive. I believe if it's all wheel drive, it's supposed to be cross. Um, but if it's, if it's a rear wheel drive, it's just front to back. Uh, but if someone has some, some information on that. That's right. That's a normal process Okay. for any car. Yeah. Teslas do eat their tires a little faster. It's, it's just because they're relatively heavy for the tires they've got on them. So they, there's a lot. There's another reason why we run a relatively high tire pressure in these cars as well, because they're bearing a lot of weight. Correct. But that's why you get fewer miles on a Tesla set of tires than you do on uh, most cars. Uh, another question from the chat. If you don't have your own garage or a similar place to store out of season tires, do you know a tire chain or similar shop that will store them and swap with season change? Um, Patrick, I, I don't know if, if you if you still have um, if you're still here, but um, do you know if Dunn does that by any chance? Or Harry, would you happen to know? No, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Mine, I, mine go in the shed, so I, I don't have a problem. Uh, maybe even a, another good question here too is if uh, to build to build on that. I would assume you could leave them outside. It might not be the best, but if you could leave them outside and, and covered, is that a uh, viable option, or is that going to do? You know, I guess Co maybe covered is okay. Covered, covered is the is key. Okay. You need to keep the sunlight off of them. The sunlight eats rubber. Gotcha. Okay, so if, if you don't have any other method to, you know, a, a garage or a basement or whatnot, 
um, or even a shop that can't do it, I guess, outside and covered. Uh, John, do you have a, you know, certain material that, is it any tarp is fine or? Um, no, the light ones, if you can see through it, it's not good, right? Okay. So you can hold okay. it up, you can see through. You want a, 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 an opaque tarp and you want to stack the tires on their sides. Don't let them sit the way they are in the car where they'll pick up a flat spot from one side, right? Lay them over on their sides, stack them that way. Thank you. Stephen, uh, it's Karen. I have this problem too. I live in a condo with a garage. I have no place to put another set of tires. Mm. I, I think a, you need to talk to Harry and get him to put all the extra tires in his shed. You know? Where does Harry live? <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> yeah, not going to help me. Not going to work, in huh? In Tarrytown. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Oh, man. It's, I mean, anyone will do anything for money, right? So if, if, you, if you bring it to like Ethos or, um, you know, a, a local body shop, I'm, I'm sure they, they would say, hey, yeah, this amount, you, you could, this just, just thoughts, you know, just spitting ideas, you could always get a uh, small storage unit for a few months. That's another option. Um, yeah. Stephen, yes. the, the, the um, Dunn Tire in DeWitt does store them for you. I think they charge 70 bucks, which is not cheap for storage but um they store them so i suspect some of the others may depending on their footprint i suppose is that 70 bucks for the season or for the month for the, no that's for the season that's not too bad that's not too bad no Perfect. thank you yeah if, if anyone's looking to start a business I, I think we have a good idea right here it's a tire storing business for the winter <laughs> <laughs> all right um from sophia's uh, um, from Sophia, just a, I guess more of a comment, but yeah, Teslas are actually much heavier than most people would imagine. Uh, and primarily it's because of the battery. Yeah, the battery is, is super heavy. So once they, once Tesla or just whoever it is figures out how to make a much higher battery density, um, energy and en energy density, then they'll be lighter and uh, more range. So it's, we have we have an exciting, pretty exciting future ahead of us here. But yeah, they, they do use aluminum in certain areas, especially the uh, Model S uses much more aluminum because it's a bigger car, bigger battery pack. So they tried to figure out ways uh, to make it lighter. And uh, Jeffrey also added store them on their side for the tires. All right, I think that uh, that is all the questions. So this will be recorded and on our club's YouTube channel for um, for your own sake. If you want to go back and check it out and see if, uh, if there was something you missed or just, just want to check it out again, uh, part one is on there. This is our last um, educational workshop for the year. So we'll probably do something in January. Maybe we'll do um, more of an ask us anything style. So if you have questions, could be winter still related. So I'll try to keep that that going. Uh, we'll make, make it open. Um, but yeah, thank you for, uh, for, for, for spending your time here this Tuesday night. And I hope this was, was uh, educational and good and, and whatnot. And yeah, have a, have a great rest of your week. And if you're in the uh, one last note, if, uh, if you're able to make it, once again, we have our annual holiday party and the Gigafactory event on the 11th and on the 12th in Long Island, there's another uh, toy drive there. So if you're able to make those, check them out. And uh, till then, have a great, uh, great time. Bye-bye. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Yes. <laughs> Happy holidays.